Word is Tiffany. Today's video, we will be talking about hostels. Ooh, I know that's a scary word for some people. Um, if you've ever watched the movie Hostel or heard of the movie Hostel, you may have been scared away. But trust me when I say hostels are not scary at all, and that was just a movie. If you have never watched the movie and want to stay in a hostel, I do not recommend watching that movie, especially if you are easily afraid. Okay, now, so what exactly is a hostel? So a hostel is a budget-friendly accommodation that you share with other people. And so hostels really remind me of a slumber party with your friends. How fun. I used to have slumber parties all the time for my birthdays. And I absolutely love this. Standing with your friends, talking, playing, having a good time. And so that's exactly what a hostel is. It's just a budget-friendly accommodation for those people who don't want to spend a lot of money on where they are staying and it's good for traveling long term. And depending on the country, you can get them for very cheap and the prices range but there's so much stuff to do. So let's get into the video where we talk about all things related to staying in a hostel. So we've got that out the way. Let's talk about some of the places where I've actually stayed in hostels, okay? Um, so let's start off with the state side. Um, my first ever hostel experience was in New York City. Um, I absolutely love the hostel. It was actually supposed to be an apartment building, I believe, that they turned into a hostel. Um, and there was, I think I remember we had like four to six roommates. I met uh, women from all over the world. And they had breakfast in the morning time, so I think because of that experience, I was super excited to explore more because I thought that the hostel was very well maintained. I've also stayed in a hostel in Hawaii. Um, yes, we were going on a cruise. I think I had just graduated from college, and so that was a gift from my mom. And I actually convinced her to stay in a hostel. So we only had to stay in a hostel one night before the cruise. She was very apprehensive, but once we got there, she was totally fine. And it is in my experience that I want people to try things at least once. So kudos to my mom for trusting me. Our next hostel that I stayed in, I convinced my aunt to stay. So I'm like slowly bringing the family in. Um, but we actually stayed at a hostel in Martha's Vineyard. So if you've never been to Martha's Vineyard, um, it can be very expensive to stay on the island. So I was determined to stay, but I was like, let's find a cheaper alternative. And so when I came across the hostel, I was super excited because the ho there's literally only one hostel on the island. Um, so we get to the island, we check into our hostel. Um, it was like a cabin -y feel, I would say. Um, but I loved it because in the morning time it was like a breakfast where everybody can sit at the table or you can make your own breakfast and so I really enjoyed that particular um, experience. So those are all the stateside hostels that I stayed in. Abroad, I stayed in hostels in Thailand. Um, I think a lot of people have the misconception that um, there will always be so many people in your room. I actually booked like a four bedroom or six bedroom um, room, but there was actually nobody in there except for me for like the first two nights. So you may just get lucky and you may end up getting your own room anyway. Uh, and what I end up enjoying about that hostel is that because I stayed for several days, they begin to know my name and look out for me. And so that was a really cool aspect to know that somebody was waiting for you to come back home or at least looking out for you when you arrive back from spending the whole day out. I've also stayed in a hostel in Colombia, and it's actually called Bourbon Street Hostel or Bourbon Street Boutique. Um, and it was right in the middle of the town, which was really great because it was very convenient once you were come, came back from hanging out at nighttime. They actually had a bar with live music at the top. And the great thing about that was it would seem like it would bother you while you're downstairs, but actually you couldn't hear any of the noise downstairs while you were in the hostel. So I was by myself randomly. <coughs> went to eat with some of the hostel mates that were in there we had a good time and then we went out afterwards i've also stayed in a hostel in south africa so this one i don't even know if i recognize that it was a hostel but now looking back it was definitely a hostel the reason why i say 
uh, looking back because I didn't actually book it. We went with my school with Howard University, and so they booked it, but it was definitely a hospital because they had four bunk beds in one area, and then me and my friend were off in another area. Um, and that was a crazy story. I'll save that story for another story time because it involved the South African police and them banging on our door. But that's a story time for another day. So those are just some of the places that I've stayed in hostels. So I hope that makes you feel a little bit better to know that you can stay in hostels stateside or you can stay in hostels internationally. So let's get into another part of the video where we'll talk about how to make sure that you pick the right hostel and some tips on why you should stay in hostels. Okay, stay tuned. I have also stayed in a hostel in Spain. I actually really, really like that hostel. Um, that particular hostel was cool because they offer like free tours. So I think I landed off the plane, went straight to the hostel, went straight on a walking tour. And it was all free. Um, you just had to tip your guide at the end. I also love, love, love the food that they fix in Spain. I think it was like 5 euros for breakfast or 10 euros for dinner. But the breakfast was a full-on spread. Um, the dinner was really good. I had some really good ribs there, which is random. Um, but they had paella one night, and that all included drinks, alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, like a salad, a main dish, and a dessert. So I definitely highly recommend these hostels because they have various things that are included in that particular one price. So how do we pick a hostel? So the first thing that I do is I go on to Hostel World. So that's www.hostelworld.com. And so when I first go to Hostel World, I look at the reviews. I am a big review person. So when you go on the website, you can actually filter by reviews, location, price, and different things like that. So I, I want to know what was your experience like. And the reason why I like to read reviews is because they are real reviews from people that have stayed at these particular hostels. They're from different countries. So people have different standards of what they think is nice or what they think is clean or like the activities or like the price or like the location. So those are all things that you're looking for in the reviews. So I want to look at a place that's very popular. So if a place has 50 re reviews versus two reviews, I'm probably going to go with that one that has been used a lot. So look at the reviews, reviews, reviews. If you have to come over for a couple days, go ahead and do that one. The next tip is the location. Where is the hostel located? So is the hostel located in a prime center where all the activities are? Or is it located in a place where you're still going to have to catch a taxi and a bus and different things to get to the center of activities? Um, so I recommend staying in a place uh, where there's a lot going on. People will tell you that in the reviews. They'll be like, oh no, it was far away to get from here, or no, it was right in the center of everything. I was able to get to my destination or my activities for the day very quickly. So make sure to look at where the hostel is located. The next one is, what type of dorm are you looking for? So a lot of people say that they would never want to stay in a hostel because they do not want to stay with other people. That is a very valid concern. I completely understand. Sometimes I don't want to be bothered with people as well. But don't be dismayed. There are hostels where you can stay where there are single rooms. So you do not have to stay with a whole bunch of people. That is definitely a myth, right? But of course it's going to be a little bit more expensive versus staying with a bunch of people, okay? Um, and when we talk about the dorm rooms, you have all female dorms, you have all male dorms, and you also have mixed dorm rooms as well. I've stayed in both all female dorms and all mixed dorms. Thankfully, I don't have any horror stories about staying in a room with an all female dorm or a mixed dorm. Everybody was very nice, very polite. I remember in Puerto Rico, I stayed in a hostel and it was a mixed dorm, but it was just me and another guy. He was super cool. Um, end up, I was like, hey, I'm leaving today. He was like, hey, you want to ride to wherever? I'm like, absolutely. If I can save money, I can. So people are very, very nice um, in these particular hostels. So definitely make sure that you filter through what you want to stay in. Again, there's mixed dorms, female dorms, and you can stay um, by yourself. And also the amount of bunk beds is important too. 
Do you want just you and one other person? Do you want it to be a four bed? Do you want it to be a six bed? I've seen as big as 10 or 15 beds. So it really just depends on what you want to do and how comfortable you feel while you're there. Next is pricing. Look up the pricing. Do you want to spend $5? Do you want to spend $10? Do you want to spend $20, $30, $40, 50 There are a range of prices that you can stay at. So again, when I say go to that house store, go to the house store and filter the particular price where you feel like it's worth it, right? Because you don't want to choose $60 hostel because then you almost might as well get a hotel. The point is to stay in a cheaper price range. So I think the most I paid for a hostel probably would have been $30, $35 at the most. Um, I'm pretty sure Spain probably was probably one of the most expensive where I stayed in Barcelona. So it really just depends again on your price for it and what you want to pay for it. And of course if you're in other countries then figure out the currency as well because then that's a little bit different um, and the price might be cheaper than what you originally pay if you're using um, the currency from another country. Three reasons why you should actually stay at a hostel. So the number one thing for me is pricing. I mean, if I'm gallivanting across the world for two weeks, three weeks, or even a month, there's no way that I personally can afford $100 a night. So if we say we're staying for 14 days and my hotel is $100 a night, not even including tax, that's $1,400 on accommodations when half the time I will be out and about on excursions. Uh, doing activities and different things like that. So for me, I just want to make sure that my hostel is clean um, and that it's neat and I'm totally okay with staying in a hostel versus a hotel. Now, of course, if I was a baller, shot caller, yes, I would stay at a hotel for 14 days at $100. But since I'm not and I travel on a budget, these are the reasons why I choose to stay at a hostel. Because of that price, when we say ching, 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 I'm saving some money while I'm on vacation. It's all a matter of what you prefer to spend your money on, and I personally pre prefer to spend my money on the activities and the excursions versus the place where I'm going to stay at. And I know many people are going to be like, eh, rolling their eyes, like, I can't do it, but trust me, you can. And like I said, there's some very nice uh, hostel locations. It's, it's a great location. Again, many of the hostels, that's why they're there. They are in locations where the activities are going on. I think that's one of the main points um, why you're staying there is because it's just close to everything. You don't want to be out in the boondocks. Although they do have hostels, you know, far out. You want to be where the action is at, where it's close to, where is it close to transportation, is it close to restaurants, is it close to the beach, is it close to the night bars, whatever the case is, you want that hostel location for that and that's where a lot of the hostels are located. In the Let's talk about food at these hostels. So some actually provide food for a particular price. Um, like I said, I mentioned in the one in Madrid, Spain, they offer, you know, breakfast I've been craving and dinner for a certain since I got here in Madrid. Also, if you say, hey, I don't want to spend money on their food and you're staying in a country for a particular time, they have kitchens. The kitchen is a common area where everybody can cook. Um, so if you buy stuff at the local supermarket, you can store it in the refrigerator, make sure you have a pan or something to put your stuff on there, and then you can cook in the morning, you can cook in the afternoons, and also, let's say you meet with other people and you find a group of friends, y'all can have like a potluck style. So it's almost like you're living at home, um, but you're living in these hostels. So I like that community atmosphere, and again, we go back to meeting new friends. This is where you meet new friends, where you're bonding over food and cooking and stuff to eat so look out for those places that provide sometimes when they say free breakfast it can be like some boiled eggs it can be some fruit it can be some bagel it can be coffee whatever the case it is that even saves you a little bit of money so that you don't have to go and get breakfast every morning so again when you're looking on hostel world make sure you're looking for a place that provide some type of food, some type of free food, or at least some where you could purchase, because sometimes you're too tired to go. Maybe you say, hey, I just got in, I don't want to go out. It's a great option where you can go downstairs and eat food. Most places have Wi-Fi. I know a lot of people say, does the Wi-Fi work? Is it okay? I've never really had any issues with the Wi-Fi in any of the hostels, and it's free. You don't have to use your data. 
it usually works pretty well some hostels have like spaces where you can actually work with the wi-fi like a uh, you know where there's a desk or some people even have computers at the hostel so it really just depends on what you're looking for and what type of accommodations that a lot have. of people say are hostel safe um will i be okay um and i have to say yes so there is usually always someone at the front desk of a hostel um, so you have people that can come in and out, but the front desk usually know who they are. So you're not allowed, you're usually not allowed to have extra guests that are outside the hostel that's there. So that's a good thing. I've even seen some security at some of the hostels where they're kind of standing outside. So you may have that factor. Also, when you are storing your stuff, most hostels or all hostels, I'm sorry, actually come with lockers. So there will be a locker that's close to your bed or um, maybe in the hallway, but usually they have the personal lockers in your room and sometimes they have another place, maybe if you want to store your luggage on an outside place, or sometimes you just keep everything in the room with you. I've never had any issues with anybody stealing my stuff in a hostel and I usually keep my suitcase pretty open. So I'm like, hey, if you want my clothes, you're that desperate, go ahead and take the clothes. But obviously, I do take my uh, passport and money, and I put those in the personal locker, okay? So don't forget to bring your lock. You can buy it at the dollar store. You can buy the one where you, where you dally, where you have to memorize the numbers, or you can buy a key one. Sometimes if you forget, the hospitals do sell them or rent them out. Um, but I never, had, I never felt unsafe in a hostel, whether it's from the guys or the girls. I know there are horror stories or creepy stories, but thankfully, I'm thanking God on this one. I am here to tell you that I have not had those particular experiences and always felt safe. And lastly, we have another good thing about hostel is various fun events. So they will have, when you first check in, they will give you your car key or your regular key and they will say, here is a list of the things that are going on for the week. They have everything from free tours to barbecue nights to let's go to karaoke. They have bar crawls. They have paint nights. There are like so many things that are going on at the hostel and I definitely say that you should take part in those things because again, you will meet people while you're there and it's a good way to have fun, especially if you don't know the particular city. If I go on a tour, then at least I know where the points are, where I can walk from, or even if I get lost, it's a good thing because then I'll know how to navigate while I'm there. So definitely take opportunity. They will have sign-up sheets. Sometimes the things are free and then sometimes there's a fee associated with it, but they will tell you all those things, meet downstairs when like, let's say the bar crawl starts and then you kind of go from there. So it's a good way to have a little bit fun, bit fun, plus meet a bunch of people and just have a good time.